In a previous video, we explored how the Hardy-Weinberg equation is derived and what the different terms mean as far as p squared, 2pq, and q squared. In this video, we will take a look at an example of how we can apply the Hardy-Weinberg equation to real-world scenarios. And we'll do a little bit of math to practice how to solve Hardy-Weinberg problems. Before we begin our example, let's review the terms involved with Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. One of the biggest challenges that people have when working through Hardy-Weinberg problems is remembering which term is which and figuring out what exactly it is you are trying to solve for. So let's review. Remember that the Hardy-Weinberg equation is actually showing the frequency of genotypes in a population. So we're looking at genotype frequencies. When we are looking to figure out the frequency of a particular allele in a population, that is when we're looking at P and Q adding up to make 100% one, uh, of the alleles in the population. So we're looking at allele frequency. So what are the genotypes we're looking at? Well, P squared is going to represent our homozygous dominant genotype. And Q squared, remember, is our homozygous recessive genotype. And 2PQ is going to represent our heterozygous genotype. And P by itself is going to represent the dominant allele. And Q represents our recessive allele. So again, the P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1 equation is referring to the frequency of genotypes in a population, and P plus Q equals 1 is referring to the allele frequencies in a population. So let's look at an example of a genetic disorder that's fairly common in the American population, uh, cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis, or CF, is a disorder that's caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene that leads to the production of thick mucus in the lungs, in the pancreas, in the digestive organs, and um, generally causes a variety of health problems in an individual who is suffering from the disorder. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder. Autosomal means that the mutation on the CFTR gene is on a chromosome that is not a sex-determining chromosome, so the disorder is not a sex-linked trait. And the recessive means that the allele is masked by the dominant allele. So in order to actually display the symptoms of cystic fibrosis, an individual must have two copies of that recessive allele. So looking at our figure here to the right, you can be considered a carrier. So you notice here it's calling the carrier mother, carrier father. When you do a Punnett square and you look at the possible outcomes uh, for a reproductive event with these two individuals, both of these individuals are considered carriers because you'll notice that they're heterozygous. They've got one dominant allele, which is the non-mutated CFTR gene, and one recessive allele, which carries that gene mutation. Same thing for the mother. One dominant allele, one recessive allele. So the chances that a child will carry a recessive allele from both parents is going to be about 25%. So here you'll see the uh, recessive, homozygous recessive genotype. You've got a heterozygote here, a heterozygote here, and homozygous dominant um, unaffected for that gene mutation. So that's a little bit about how cystic fibrosis is inherited as an autosomal recessive disorder. You may recall from our previous lessons on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium that there are some conditions 
that a population must meet in order to be considered in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium where you don't see changes in allele frequencies from one generation to the next. And we mentioned that that was very uncommon in natural populations. A couple of those conditions uh, were large population size, random mating, and the absence of evolutionary forces, which essentially means there's no selective pressure on that particular allele in that population. So while it is unrealistic to find populations that are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for most traits, it works in the case of cystic fibrosis for a couple of reasons. So we are assuming a large population size. We're talking about the human population, which is enormous. Um, we're talking about random mating. In the case of cystic fibrosis, because it is a recessive disorder, you can be a carrier if you are a heterozygote for this particular allele you are a carrier but you have no symptoms so with respect to the cystic fibrosis trait for this gene mutation uh, mating does happen at random because you don't really know if a potential mate has that mutation and finally the selective pressure that is associated with alleles that cause diseases in humans is a little bit different in that recessive alleles for diseases tend to be somewhat hidden from natural selection. That is to say that they are affected far less if than if they were a dominant disease-causing allele. So you can possess the allele without displaying the symptoms of the disease and as such that allele can sort of sneak through and remain in the gene pool in sort of low frequencies. That is a discussion for another video, but if you are interested in reading further about the selection on genes for human diseases, here are a couple of good sources that you can find on Google Scholar or Galileo. So let's go ahead and get into a problem. According to the National Institutes for Health, Approximately 1 in 3,000 white newborns are affected by cystic fibrosis, and we want to know if we can use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to estimate the number of cystic fibrosis carriers in this population. So the first step, as with any word problem, is really just to figure out what you know and what you are trying to figure out. So first of all, what do we know? Well, we know that 1 in 3,000 uh, in this population of white newborns are affected by cystic fibrosis. Remember, in order to be affected or to display symptoms of cystic fibrosis, an individual has to be recessive, uh, homozygous recessive at that locus for that trait. So one in 3,000 is going to represent which one of our terms from the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Well, if this is the frequency of the recessive uh, phenotype, which is the result of the recessive, uh, homozygous recessive genotype, then one out of 3,000 is gonna be equal to Q squared, which is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype in the population. So what are we looking for? We want to use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to figure out how many individuals are carriers of the cystic fibrosis allele. So to be a carrier, you have to have the allele, but you don't have two copies of the allele because you don't exhibit any symptoms. So the genotype for a carrier, remember, is heterozygous. So it's gonna be RPQ. So we are looking for the frequency of the heterozygous genotype in the population. So our term from the Hardy-Weinberg equation that represents Heterozygote, heterozygote genotype frequency is 2pq. So let's begin by solving for q so we can find the frequency of the recessive allele in the population. So let's take this fraction, 1 over 3,000, or 1 out of 3,000, and convert it to a decimal. So 1 divided by 3,000 gives us 0 0.00033 approximately. 
So Q is the square root of Q squared. So we take the square root of both sides of this, which gives us Q equals approximately 0 0.017. So now we have Q. Once we have Q, we can solve for P. Remember that P plus Q is always going to equal 1 because both P and Q are um, allele frequencies and 1 represents 100% of the population, 100% of, of the gene pool. So if we know Q, we know Q is 0 0.17, 0 0.17. Then you just subtract basically Q from 1 and P is going to become 0 0.983. So let's clear a little bit of working space here. So we know that P equals 0 0.983, and we also know that Q equals 0 0.017. So we have our allele frequencies. Now, what do we want to know? Remember, we want to know 2PQ, or the number of uh, heterozygotes in the population, the number of, of carriers of cystic fibrosis. So how do we figure that out? Well, recall that that genotype frequency is 2PQ. So all you got to do is go in and do 2 times P times Q. And that is going to give you 0 0.033. Now what does that number mean? Well, let's do a couple of other calculations and then we'll put all of the pieces together. So this is gonna be the frequency of, remember, this is 2PQ, so this is gonna be frequency of heterozygotes in the population. Well, let's see if we can figure out what is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. That's gonna be P squared, so that's gonna be 0 0.983 squared which is going to give us 0 0.966. And recall that we already know the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype because that was given to us in the original question. That was 1 in 3,000, which was our Q squared, which equals 0 0.0003. So if we put the pieces of the equation back together, remember we're looking at putting it into the format of P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared for our Hardy-Weinberg equation, we have P squared, which is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype, which is going to be approximately 96.6% of the population. The frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype in the population, which is going to be 0.03% of the population, which are affected by cystic fibrosis, and then 2PQ, which is going to be approximately 3.3% of the population, are going to be heterozygous at the locus for the CFTR gene, meaning that 3.3% of the population uh, can be estimated to be carriers of cystic fibrosis. They don't exhibit the symptoms, but they do have one copy of the gene mutation. So remember, when you're trying to solve uh, word problems using Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, just remember to look for what you know and look for what you're trying to figure out. You know your terms, P squared, 2PQ, Q squared, P and Q, and if you can figure out uh, one of those, you can figure out the rest of them.